This year our family bought 140 acres of land at the northern end of the New England Tablelands in New South Wales. Tenterfield is the closest town, about 20 minute drive away, and it has a population of about 4,000 people. The town is nestled in a valley beneath Mount Mackenzie, one of the highest points along the northern tablelands. Sometimes it snows up at the lookout, which is probably only about 15 kilometres from our property. The Bohemian Tea Room is really cute. The first time we stopped in there, we ate outside in the garden. The cafe sits in a 133 year old cottage and they made us feel right at home. Fur babies are allowed and they even gave our Labrador puppy Coco some homemade dog biscuits to enjoy, not to mention that they also lavished her with, her with lots of affection. The first few properties that we looked at in, in autumn were on Gunya Road. Neither of us could agree on the one we liked best, so we knew they weren't the ones for us. Some of the blocks were pretty rough. One was basically a granite mountain, which we climbed up and had, had a fantastic view, but not a lot of usable land. This time we camped at Kookaburra Campgrounds at Bolivia, about halfway between Glen Innes and Tenterfield. Set on 600 acres of bushland, we had plenty of room to ourselves. It was peaceful. They had a fantastic and clean modern shower block with hot water, which was very much needed as the weather was quite brisk. We went to the Glen Innes showgrounds to the Standing Stones for the markets. This was quite an experience because Coco wanted to say hi to everybody. We also explored some other properties around Torrington. Then we settled down by the fire with some craft sparkling honey mead from Two Wild Souls. The area around Tenterfield has a subtropical highland climate with cold frosty winters and moderately hot wet summers. Temperatures below freezing in winter is common as are light to moderate snowfalls during severe winters. The next time we went down to Tenterfield to look at properties was in winter. So we stayed at the Tenterfield Motor Inn which uh, allowed Coco to stay with us as well. It was clean and comfortable but most importantly it had heating which was very much needed when the nights got below zero. We went out to dinner in Tenterfield and I don't think we saw any other people in the street. It was so quiet and peaceful. You could smell the smoke coming from all the chimneys of the houses and I had imagined everyone snuggled up like hobbits by the fire. The fairy lights in the trees in the main street make Tenterfield so pretty by night. June was the first time we saw our property. When Paul and I drove over the little creek, and saw the old chimney standing alone in the middle of nowhere from an old homestead in days gone by. We both looked at each other and knew straight away that this was the place for us. The property has a shed, a sheep yard, an old water well, a rainwater tank, a small creek, a couple of dams, and 140 acres of dry grass. The area is bushfire prone and tends to have dry winters and wet summers. This was the middle of winter. We explored a few different properties on this day.
my son and Coco sleeping in the car. My son always seems to fall asleep when we're four wheel driving. A couple of weeks later, we went back to Tenterfield for two weeks for the school holidays. We saw some of the main tourist attractions where we were allowed to take Coco with us. We went to the World War II tank traps and Thunderbolt's lookout. Thunderbolt was the longest roaming bush ranger in Australian history. We did the Mount Mackenzie scenic tourist drive, taking in all the unusual granite rock outcrops. Back in Tenterfield, we had a look at the giant cork tree, which was brought out from England in a jam jar in 1861. It still grows today in Wood Street and is believed to be one of the largest in its kind in Australia. The tree flourishes in the New England climate. For hundreds of years, people have believed that cork trees, also known as wishing trees, had magical powers and bring good luck to those who observe certain rituals when visiting the trees. The museum and the Tenterfield Saddlery were closed due to COVID, but look at the lovely stonework on that cottage. My son stands super tall next to my mum. We also went to the Henry Park School of Arts Museum and also had some lunch in the cafe there. We went back to have another look at the property before putting in our offer. They had done a burn off and there were big patches of burned grass everywhere. There was also signs of wild pigs and dogs about. We picked a spot up on the hill with great views to build our house one day. And Coco went for a swim in the creek. Hey, go, go.
two old chimneys look like they were part of an old homestead in days gone by. So far we haven't been able to discover much history about it, except that a lady called Catherine, born O'Neill, formerly O'Keefe, Heffernan, originally from Ireland, bought the property in 1901 for a few pounds, and she died in 1947 in Gleninus. She had 12 children with her two different husbands. Apparently the Heffernans were one of the first pioneers in the area and some of their descendants still live here. We went to the Tenterfield Railway Museum a blast from the past, considering all my relatives on my dad's side worked with the railways and I have lots of memories on the trains. That night we relaxed by the fire with a bottle of red at the Best West at Henry Park's restaurant where we were staying this time. We went back to the Bohemian Tea Room for another meal and got the same great service. We sat on couches by the fire inside this time, which was super cozy and felt like home. During this time, we were very lucky to have the support of our broker, Melinda Sherrard from Regional Finance Solutions. She was fantastic in supporting us the whole way along and making sure that we were able to get the loans that we needed to buy the property that we wanted. Next was a trip to the Alumba Lavender Farm and we had some lavender scones and tea. I love lavender plants and I've always dreamed of having rows and rows of my own fields of purple. The Alumba Lavender Farm is part of a 4,000 acre cattle property east of Stanthorpe. The lavender covers six acres. They have a gift shop and also accommodation options. We went for a drive to the Emmerville Mining Museum and had lunch at the Emmerville pub. Then we went, to, went on to the Deepwater Brewery for pizza and beer. Our offer the, for the property was accepted and our property settled in August 2021, but we couldn't get there till December the following summer due to the COVID border closures. Our first night on the property in December, Coco ate some wild dog bait that had been on the property and she died suddenly, which was quite traumatic for the whole family. So our first morning on our property was spent burying our beautiful dog. It was a very sad and stressful start to what was meant to be a happy one. Then later that day, we had a massive hailstorm which filled all the creeks and dams. I absolutely love the sound of a babbling brook. How about you?
And then in the afternoon of the day that we lost Coco, we had this beautiful sunset in Coco's final resting place. We're gonna miss you, girl. With all the trouble our family's been through, I think we should plant a wishing tree. What do you think? And also getting our tooks here and some milking goats for my soaps. The sound of the rain falling on the tin roof, the birds chirping at the crack of dawn, the gorgeous sunsets over the ridge, the wildlife, trees and mountains as far as the eye can see, the fire crackling and giving warmth on cold days, the sunburn and the icy cold winds at night. It's been a very special time for us and something we've worked so hard for for over 10 years now. At times, we were both holding down three jobs each. We missed out on a lot during this time to get that special place. We had to be frugal. The majority of this trip was spent on removing rocks, weeds, sticks, skulls, logs, and long grass around the shed, chimneys, and creek. We found that our creek water can dry up completely in a matter of three weeks. Paul has been cleaning up the area around the chimneys and digging around, finding old artifacts and pretending to be an archeologist. We saw a red belly black snake down by the creek, wild goat on the mountain, geckos, spiders, birds, eagles, kangaroos and wallabies, and our sheep and cows from our neighbors came for a visit too. Paul 
girls' feet are steaming after a hard day's work, but we still have so much hard work ahead of us. With so many projects on our to-do list, it can seem quite overwhelming at times, but just one thing at a time, one day at a time, one step at a time toward a simpler life. We're still deciding on a name for our property. What do you think it should be?